Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing several topics of the technology variety, which have popped up, as usual, over the past 24 or so hours. The first of which is Intel's Coffee Lake SKUs, specifically the six core derivatives. Some benchmarks have leaked and paints the upcoming mainstream CPUs in a very positive light, assuming the benchmarks are accurate, which they appear to be. Then we're going to discuss Skylake and Kaby Lake. What? You're saying those CPUs are pretty old? What could possibly be going on in the world of those? Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, there is broken microcode in these CPUs, which is causing issues with hyper-threading. We'll go into that in a minute. And finally... We have some specifications of an Asus laptop which supports a Ryzen 7 1700 processor along with a RX 580. We're going to be starting things out with Intel's Coffee Lake which as you know there are multiple SKUs within this family but specifically we're going to be talking about the 6 core processor which once again has 12 threads thanks to hyperthreading slash SMT. So some results have appeared on Geekbench and they appear to have leaked from MSI. I'm going to make an assumption that someone forgot to disable their internet connection. Oops. Anyway, uh, the results for the well, benchmark are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't need to read them out to you. But the single thread score being 4,619 is very impressive when one factors in the clock speed. Because it's running at a base of 3.19 gigahertz. Now, obviously this is not the final clock speeds of the processor. Therefore, these are probably representative of engineering samples, which makes this very impressive when not only is this not running at full clock speed, but also probably quite early BIOS revisions. So, I have to admit, being a curious soul, I decided to do a bit of Googling and also look at a 1600X and also a 1700X's performance. Now, obviously, some of this is going to depend on what the user has done in terms of overclocking their processor, what memory are they using, what about the rest of the system, what tasks have they got in the background, blah, 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 blah. Like, some people have obviously even disabled uh, hyper, I'm sorry, SMT with the Ryzen processors. So, obviously, in those instances, that's probably going to have a negative impact on the score. But one can see that the Coffee Lake SKU is actually doing rather well. Very impressive, actually. With the 1600X, for example, pulling in, you know, the low 20,000s and the, the 1700X hitting more around the, the mid-20,000 mark. For, and this is obviously multi-core scores. Another small caveat is, obviously, this is not exactly indicative of every workload ever. So there is that to take into consideration. But once again, I'd like to point out that this is very early silicon. Obviously, it's not running at full clock speed. What is the state of the the you know the the motherboard drivers, the BIOS and microcode on the CPU and all the other bits and pieces? So in my opinion, anyway, it's looking like it's a very nice processor. I have a feeling that there's not going to be a clear cut answer between the Coffee Lake and the Ryzen lineup. I have a feeling it's really going to come down to pricing for a lot of folks. I'm hoping Intel do charge rather sensibly for this, because if they do, that's only good for us as customers. Speaking of microcodes, though, let's talk about something not so good for Intel. So, I actually received this tip from Joe via email, so thanks very much to him. And basically, this entails a serious Intel Skylake and KB Lake microcode bug. Now, what this basically does is cause errant behavior, their words, not mine, when you are running certain workloads with hyperthreading enabled. I'll read out the advisory um, email, which has come from the Debian.org mailing list. It is saying that, I quote, um, when a system is running with... Uh, hyperthreading with an Intel Skylake or KB Lake processor. There could, in some such situations, be dangerously misbehave when hyperthreading is enabled. And this can cause applications and system misbehavior, data corruption, and data loss. And Intel have also put out a PDF 
which says, and I quote, under complex microarchitectural conditions, short loops of less than 64 instructions that use AH, BH, CH, or DH registers, as well as their cons- corresponding wider registers, example, RACS, EAX, or AX, AX, or um, 4 AH. God damn, reading that was terrible. Anyway, may cause unpredictable system behavior. This can only happen when both logical processes of the same physical process of cause are active. Read hyperthreading. Now, I'd like to clear something up because I actually screwed up a little bit myself when I was first reading this from another website. Um, they were actually reporting before I started to do some digging that it was only affecting Debian. But that's not the case. I started to realize that it wasn't drivers or, you know, the actual operating system itself. Instead, it's microcode on the processor. So, obviously, when it's microcode on the processor, it isn't so much with the operating system's fault. Therefore, it's probable that this bug could, in theory, creep up in just about any operating system. Because, once again, it's a part of operating system's logic. Uh, sorry, the CPU's logic. It's that that's causing the issue. So, what that basically means is that you're going to need an update from, well, Intel. And wait for a motherboard vendor, your motherboard vendor, to release a BIOS. With any luck, your motherboard vendor whether it's MSI, Asus, whomever, will release a BIOS for your particular motherboard. Obviously, it's probably going to be more likely that they will for KB Lake, but they should probably should, considering this is not like, you know, adi- adding additional features or better RAM timings or something like that on the BIOS. It's actually fixing a really bad bug. So with anything, with any luck at all, they will fix it most speedily. Now, let's move on to... Ryzen and laptops. So, Ryzen and laptops have not exactly been common uh, as an association recently, and obviously that's because AMD is still rolling out the mobile versions of the Ryzen architecture, and actually one can levy a very similar complaint on the Polaris lineup of graphics cards as well. A Asus ROG laptop, which would feature a Ryzen CPU, has actually been teased for a while, but we've not known the full specifications. Anyway, a user by the name of Christian B has actually emailed me, which is a link to overclockers.co.uk. For those who do not know, it's a very well-respected shop, an e-tailer, if you will, in the UK, shockingly and all. And they do list the full specifications of the Asus ROG. I won't read out all of them, because quite frankly, I'll be here for way too long. But you can see that it does come with everything you'd expect with a Ryzen 7, so it comes with a base clock of, uh, sorry, a base clock of 3 gigahertz with a boost clock of 3.7. This is with a Ryzen 7 1700 and an RX 580 with 4 gigabytes of memory. And this also comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4, a terabyte of hard drive space, although it's only a 5400 RPM, but that's not too surprising. And all of the other display point, uh, display ports and all the other bits and bobs that you'd expect with a laptop. So it's quite impressive. Uh, this also comes with a 17-inch 1080p screen, which is 60 hertz. Basically, this laptop is enough to give most desktops a run for their money. Like, if you look at the average uh, computer on Steam, for example, what most users are running, this laptop would kick its butt. So that's very impressive indeed. Anyway, with all of that said, I think that's just about it for this video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.